Hello all you geeky nerds out there. I am the Diabolical Doctor Stalker, here with an experimental coil gun design. If you google coil gun, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to the 5 results show up, which, as far as I can tell, are all similar in principle. Switching a charge capacitor through a wire coil to create an intense magnetic field, which silently accelerates a metallic projectile to high speed. Blender animation. Nice. Here's a circuit schematic of the most common design. I borrowed it from coilgun.info. The plan uses wall-supplied AC, but portable battery designs are also common. On the left is a mains-fed transformer T1, which steps up 110 volts AC to an unlabeled 300. The output is rectified by diode bridge D1 and charges capacitor bank C1 to 300 volts. Resistor R1 limits charging current. This resistor is important since an empty capacitor's near-zero resistance will cause a momentary high current surge, which may blow fuses. As a safety measure, resistor R2 slowly drains the capacitor bank. Electrocution hurts. S1 is a silicon-controlled rectifier, basically a switch with no moving parts that when turned on will stay on. When switch SW1 is pressed, the SCR is activated. A pulse of high current energizes coil L1 and accelerates the projectile. This is the most common design I could find, probably due to its simplicity, so that's a positive, as is the silent nature of its operation, but it does have drawbacks. Drawback number one is efficiency. 2% conversion efficiency from stored electrical energy to projectile kinetic energy is totally craptastic. That means an input of 1,000 joules is needed for a useful output of just 20 joules, while the remaining 980 is lost as heat. Pitiful. Batteries can't supply that kind of sustained current, sustained draw without being humongous, which leads to the second problem. Drawback number two is large size. 1,000 joule capacitors are big. Big batteries are big. 500 watt plug-in transformers are big and unportable. Portability is king so small lightweight batteries are used, are a must. Being forced into recharging them after three shots is unaccessible. Drawback number three is a simple design. WTF, you thought simplicity was good. Simplicity is good when it is beneficial. Unfortunately for the popular coil gun design, simple is actually a hindrance. Ideally the projectile should experience acceleration in only one direction, towards the target. However, if the coil is still energized while the projectile passes the halfway mark through the coil, the projectile will be slowed. Timing is critical, and my design may offer a solution. Coil guns do have the potential to be much, power, much more powerful than chemical-based accelerators, for example a gun, but poor efficiency limits performance. Now for the solutions. In this next circuit, you should notice the addition of a second capacitor bank in series with the coil. C2 is identical to C1. Here the idea, the idea here is that before the gun fires, C1 is fully charged and C2 is at zero volts. While firing, C1 is partially discharged through, coil, through the coil into C2. Afterwards, both capacitors should be at approximately the same voltage and together contain a large percentage of C1's initial energy. Wasted heat should be significantly reduced and, reduced, and I am optimistic, with fingers and toes crossed, that the projectile's velocity won't suffer. Adding C2 will change the coil gun's dynamics while operating, altering, altering pulse time and maximum current flow. C1 and C2 need not be identical. Maybe making C2 double the capacity of C1 is a good thing. Playing with these values will be beneficial. For those who have been paying attention, you're probably now thinking, all right, C1 and C2 are still partially charged, but what good is capturing all of that energy if it will bleed away through resistor 2 and 4 as heat? To answer that question, to that I answer with another schematic, which adds a boost converter while in operation, the converter will step up C2's voltage enough to partially recharge C1 while simultaneously dropping C2's voltage, voltage back to zero. C1 is then topped off by T1 or battery-based charger and the gun is ready to fire again. Let's recap and deal with some hypothetical op optimistic numbers. 
The common design is 98% wasteful and functions more as a space heater than gun. A thousand joules input equals 20 useful joules out. Say my design is initially, my design is initially 100% efficient, meaning zero, zero joules are lost as heat. 20 go to the projectile and the remaining 980 is divided evenly between C1, 490, and C2, another 490. The energy from C2 is then transferred into C1 via the boost converter at, f say, 50% efficiency, which leaves C1 containing 490 joules plus an, plus an additional 245, which equals 735 joules. Now, 1,000 minus 735 equals 265 joules used total. 20 20 joules by the projectile divided by this 265 is approximately 13% efficiency. Not too shabby. All of this is entirely hypothetical, mind you, but will make for an interesting experiment. Given that most of the energy will be recuperated, recharge times and battery power demand following the first charge should decrease. I expect to see some rapid fire, super efficient portable guns, coil guns, based on my idea. So post a link in the comics comments below. Now I did post this idea as a comment on another YouTube video and I received a response about how dangerous this could, be, could potentially be. Capacitors can be discharged rapidly with no problem but pulse charging them may lead to an explosion. That's totally awesome. If this is the case make sure to wear safety goggles. The idea for this coil gun came to me when I thought what if accelerating a projectile is the device's secondary function? Think about that. Dr. Stalker away!